Hey fellow backyard boys, Nick here. So we're having some beautiful weather right now. I figured that would be a nice time to build a fire and maybe make a boat. So today I'm going to show you guys how to make a PVC boat over a fire. Now I've let this burn down a little bit and today we're going to be working with a three quarter inch pipe. Now this can be done with any diameter of pipe, though the smaller diameters will heat faster and be less likely to burn. Now what's going to happen is because we're working with a fire, you are going to get some discoloration in the pipe, but that's mainly because of what the fire is putting out, the like creosote and such like that, and not so much any burns. Now if you see any major burns, you're going to want to scrap the pipe. It can be a little difficult to discern the two, and that's why a, an open flame like this is usually not the best thing. What would be better than this would be to actually cover this with some sort of insulation and make like a large heat pocket. That would be a lot more efficient. But we're just going to heat it this way. I've got my flattening jig back here. And here we go. So what you want to do is just go really light and pass this over the hottest part of the fire. You don't want to go actually into the flames because then it's going to start charring and it's going to be really hard to tell what's going on. So this is kind of like roasting marshmallows. You don't want to stick it in or it's going to burn. Leave it out and you're going to get it nice and warm and uh, pliable. But I don't like marshmallows. I kind of like the crispy ones. We're going to try and not go for crispy today. So the trick is to just keep it moving. So the overall dimensions of this pipe that we're working on is uh, 52 inches long. I've gone ahead and marked center, and I've also marked uh, two and a half inches from the center and then two inches out from that. That's going to establish our handle. Alright, so it's starting to get pliable now, so you just want to be careful and make sure it doesn't fall into the flames, because that would be a bad thing. So you just want to keep things moving, you don't want to hold it over one spot too long. So the center is pretty much well done, I just got to get the ends here to catch up. And if you notice there's a big black uh, spot on the pipe here, that's from where I touched the log. It's not an actual burn in the pipe. So we're safe still.
And basically what we're doing with this bow is kind of the idea behind it is we're building a simple, fairly lightweight bow that would be nice and fast enough. If you needed to use this to get food on the table, it would be a fast enough bow and accurate enough for small game. Pretty close, so I'm just gonna heat it gently, try not to burn it, try not to scorch it. And then, when you're working in colder temperatures, it's about 20 degrees out here, so if it's colder outside, you also want to limit the amount of uh, time the pipe spends out of the fire. Because if it gets too cool, it's not going to work, obviously. Like we're almost there. Just gotta get the center a little warmer. Woo! Everything's good, it's nice and pliable, you can see I can get a good flex without any collapses. So now, I'm going to go ahead and put it in my flattening cake as quickly as possible. The quicker you do this, the more successful you will be. So, we've got a good taper in here. This will work for what we want. Now, I went ahead and put a... My spacers are set at one inch for a three-quarter inch pipe. What I'm doing here is, since the idea is that we're actually going to be using this for something, and we want a little more performance, by leaving the center thicker, we're actually going to get a little more draw weight. Uh, that's going to proportionally give it more energy storage per inch of draw. So we won't be able to boost its efficiency so much as we'll be able to make it work a little more for what we have. 
the cost is a little bit of stability, but it's not a, it's not a big deal, especially at 52 inches. Now, if this were four inches shorter, I'd say you're cutting it close. But at 52 inches, this thing has still got uh, quite a bit of length to go that you can play with. So, here we go. I'm guessing it's probably cool now. So I'm going to go ahead and keep the other side. still a little warm, which means we can still flex it, and I just want to take any of these kinks out. And what I'm doing is I'm just going back because this tip is not as uh, flattened as I would have hoped. So I'm just going to warm it up a little bit. And then reclamp it, and we'll see what we can get. And then I'm going to flip it around. So that looks good. So once that cools, I'm going to flip it around and do the other side. 